but he did not sell. But he, he basically did these short answer discussion questions, and that was it. We had a midterm and final. And I think I wrote 32 pages on the file. And the file was comprehensive. So he, he didn't give them to you, but he said, talk about them in class, but you know, he you knew he was giving you the questions kind of thing. So I just thought it was easier if I wrote them out. Yeah, okay. So there's no, no, there's no argument there. All right, here we go. Let's do this. And please, if something looks, if you have, and like I said, I'm not an authority on a lot of this. This is still not my wheelhouse, but I have a much better, I did take zoology, okay? <laughs> because we didn't even, I was telling, we were talking about this when I was y'all's age, we didn't have the major biology class. So if you're pre-med, pre-med, pre-pharmacy or something like that, or this will be a high biology, she took a, a year of zoology class. She took a year of zoology one and zoology two, and then, uh, and then if you went to your interest in plants, you'd take body like 200 of them. But I do think we do a really good job with this, with the simple about, I'm talking about education in general. So we're about 20 years we've been doing this major biology class. Where you, know, you have to get a little body, you get a little fun you get a little bit of everything, right? Okay, but but, but I do think of, uh, you know, most of us, if we're honest, you know, we're more interested in us, I think, right? Or how, how it relates to us, right? But anyway, good stuff here. Okay, let me see if I can find where I stop. We were running through these. I, okay, I gotta go back and admit this. I had a couple. I got, I got a couple of folks give me the lie. Okay, so I'm going to repeat myself a little bit here. But uh, uh, one of the short answer questions on, on this chapter was list the four characteristics of uh, of the chordates, right? Right. I think that's all right. No, no, no. Yeah, list the four basic characteristics of chordates. So that's the first question on 29. And so I got one of my students give me the evil eye because I can't see y'all's face. I can't tell if you're smiling or sticking your tongue at me or you know she's doing a, a, a mental bird or bur whatever so struggling but I, but, but I have fun with this look no the cord is your backbone okay all your our vertebrae our cartilage have uh, excuse me sharks have collagenous backbone you have a dorsal nerve cord our spinal cord or you have a, just a nerve down your back that runs the body okay here's the three that are controversial and I guess some evil eyes from my my I don't know. I always speak on that. Hey, look, nah, I shouldn't do this. I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings there. But, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But, but so, how many of y'all had a friend that homeschooled? And, and I had a friend. Anybody homeschooled in here? Okay, that's okay. But, you know, but they're pretty. I have some of my best students that were homeschooled. But sometimes they struggle with first year college because the only teacher they have was who? Mom and Dad. I mean, so there, there is a, I, there, I'm a lot different than most of you. Mom and Dad call me if you're homeschooled, right? And I talk fast and I am I'm half crazy. They, they, we have a little struggle sometimes, right? They struggle that first semester. But but I have had several really good friends of mine that were students that probably had never seen anything but like G version movies, you know, their whole life when they're 20 and they're, I mean, they're literally 18 and they've never seen nothing. Like, I mean, you know, the, the Muppets, have y'all seen now the Muppets are on Disney Plus and they put up a warning with it. They got a warning because it contains stereotyping of, of people. And I'm like, really? Really, have we got a little bit too politically correct, right? I mean, come on, you know, Miss Piggy is a pig. I mean, come on, she's a pig, right? Okay, but she's a beauty queen. Okay, but anyway, but I had, I, but that person in one other class gave me the lie when I told them they had gill slits and tail in their mother's womb, they didn't like that because it made them make them think like they might be an animal. But well, we are an animal, okay? You are an animal, okay? I think we're the highest animal, but isn't that kind of crazy? You had gill slits in your mom's womb. And they became gills for the fish. They become our uh, parathyroid gland, thymus, uh, station tube that connects the ear to the throat, but we don't got gills. And the reason I bring it up again in lecture is I forgot to tell y'all the other day that I had a student who did have a hole in his throat right here. And he oozed in class. So he, he did have one of these tubes that went through his throat. It was weird. And I, and I, and I, of course, you know me, I had to ask him outside class, can you breathe on the water thinking he might have gills? You know, he's like, oh, he's not. <laughs> but then I said, I asked him one day, I said, dude, I think I would probably have them sewed up because they're probably not going to be real cool on a date. There's a little, you know, little spot running down your throat through a hole right here. I'm just saying, I probably would have had them sewed We became friends. That was after we became friends. And he goes, well, you want to know why I didn't have those tubes? And he had a little tube sewed up in his throat. He said, you want to know why I didn't have them closed? And I'm like, yes. He said, they wrap around my carotid artery. <laughs> and they support the carotid artery. And if they cut them out, the cried artery's not broken. I said, they look good. They're working. They're working for you. And he married the most beautiful girl you ever think. So he did good. He did really good. He played with, I don't know. He had other attributes. I guess he was good looking with his little gill slits. Okay, but anyway, they have been people with tails too, right? Y'all heard about this? There are people that have a little bit of tail sticking out. I'm just saying you should have your husband or wife just go to the doctor and be checked. Uh -huh. And before you get married, just make sure everything's cool. You know, just in this day of age that you're, you're okay with what they are, right? I'm just saying, because we've got all these friends. 
multi multi faceted stuff. I just think we should have some kind of clearinghouse to let you know, you know, like you know, just saying. I think it'd be fun. Fine. If we carry like a little app, so okay, hey, let's see, anybody can. Let's do it. We'll be friends. We're not. We're not there. Okay, I'll do it. So we're just not compatible. Compatibility app. When y'all go do that, we get rid. Okay, guys. I'd like to look Tinder. Okay, yeah, yeah, Tinder. Got that on Tinder. Okay. All right. So anyway, isn't that kind of crazy? It's an easy one, but look, and here it is. You did have that little tail. Look. So if you're in development, you had a tail and these kill switch. So the question I asked yesterday in class was what? So what does that tell us? May not tell us anything. I think it tells us we came to fish. <laughs> and then we come for fish. And then life probably started in water on earth, right? And we and I'm okay, I'm good with this. Look, and God evolved us to this. And this is some remnants of that. These are some of those reminders of where we come from, right? Because we develop very similar. So development is very cool. Okay, cousin sweet sea squirt. <laughs> and we looked at this. So we're working our way up to mammals, and we're we're working our way up. I think we're gonna finish what I stopped, so I'll speed up. But look at this. This is very cool about distinct groups, phylum, different groups of vertebrae of the chordates. The invertebrates have a, don't have a backbone, invertebrates do, so we got the invertebrates down here. And we're working our way up, up, the, up the chain here. Cactus and vertebrae. They have the vertebral column, skull, and that endoskeleton that we talk about, right? And that's cool. Other ones, internal organization. And what, if we go through this, these chapters, if y'all watch these videos or read these chapters, just I, I want you to kind of get a big scheme of what's going on or a big picture of how the respiratory system changes, right? Remember the planaria, the flatworms? They don't have any respiratory system. They actually diffuse oxygen, run out of water into their body. Then we see that evolution of gills and fish, right? And then we see the lungs develop. So very cool. And kidneys are very interested. We also go from uh, to a closed circulatory system. And I talked about this in the lecture yesterday, but our blood is in, always in blood vessels, okay? In the higher animals. The insects actually don't have, they have an open circulatory system where their heart just flows. Be like us blowing water hoses on all of our organs and we got a vein at the bottom of the abdomen that picks it back up and carries it back to the heart. They have an open circulatory system, which is very rare. I did not get that the way in the grad school kind of freaked me out. And if you go back and watch the lecture from yesterday, I talked about anybody did a brown fish with the cricket and you stick him and that white stuff oozes out, that's his blood. They don't carry oxygen in their blood. They carry oxygen through the little tubes in their side called a, a tracheids and spin and spinules, these holes they have a piping that runs out of their So they don't carry oxygen in their blood, which is very weird. Okay, here's another course for me with Kumbaya. Talks about the uh, book gets it, they get real excited about the different uh, fish that I'm not too crazy about. But we have the jawless fish, 28,000 species of fish, the oldest, most primitive ones of these early fish that are jawless. Look at this guy. That's kind of scary looking guy. So no jaw. And we see the evolution of the jaw. Okay, these guys were ectoderms, coldness of water they're in. They had gills. We saw evolution of scales. And then we see this evolution of the jaw, okay, which is kind of cool. And we see a lot of this. There's a lot of good fossil records in fish because all that bones that they, they fossilize really well. So we've got some good stuff here. Uh, the chondrichthys is the phylum uh, that the sharks and stingrays are in. Uh, their only bone in the shark is the jaw. Now they can, they're just kind of weird. They don't have, they have teeth on the jaw, but they, they don't have real bones like we do. They have cartilage in that place. And I, I think they're amazing, probably the ultimate predator of the ocean. They have not changed hardly at all in you know, two or three hundred million years. Okay, so they, they've reached the pinnacle probably of evolution in that area. Uh, predator, of course, the predator jersey, look at that, man. That, that's a swimming killing machine, right? I mean, amazing things here. Really amazing uh, organism. I know y'all probably been to SeaWorld or some of these places. They might be in the Atlanta Aquarium. That's pretty cool. That, that's pretty amazing, right? You can, you can walk right up and see these guys. Stingrays, right? Pretty cool one here. Uh, some of them have the shocker. They, they can shock their, their enemy with the tail. Uh, I was telling them in the video that I went on a cruise one time and for like, I don't know, 50 bucks, $100 excursion. They put you in a boat, carry out the stingray island out in the middle of the Caribbean. And these stingrays, they feed stingrays on this little, uh, it's an island with water. It's just not really an island. It's like it's a three feet water. <laughs> okay, but they've been feeding them here for like 500 years. The, the pirates and the explorers. And you just go out there and they throw food out, they come up and they try to they, they literally knock you down, they knock my wife out. Okay, they knock her down, trying to jump over her own up there, trying to bleed her or what. I don't know. Like, just say it and say what it looked like, okay. But they were freaking her, it was freaking out, man. It was not, I mean, I'm talking about hundreds coming up. And I'm talking about one of them almost big as me. We me and my friend picked up on the water. So pretty cool. They have a mouth up under there, right? They have a tube here. Yeah, where is that? Oh, I had a picture of one of those. 
All right, so bony fish, here's a cool term, ostic fish. So the chondritic fish are chalazinous fish, okay, that's a class. And then ostic fish are the bony fish. So all of our, all the fish that we have in Gulf Mississippi are falling in this group pretty much, except the carp. The carp is chalazinous. If you've ever been carp fishing, uh, or you've been fishing and saw a carp, that is a chalazinous fish. Oh, uh, and this is about where I stopped here. One of the coolest things these guys got is this swim bladder. Because you ever wonder, you ever thought about how they know how they're able to stay in depth of the lake? So they have a bladder, look at this. They have a bladder in here, up under their rib cage, called a swim bladder, and they carry oxygen, just like a submarine does. And when they die, they release the air to go deeper. So they can float in a water column with that swim bladder. Okay? Uh, and I did take a bad shot about anybody, anybody, I did, I did take a bad shot. I apologize, she wasn't watch it, but uh, I got tickled. Everybody saw the river sea urchin back with the condor, it's underwater, it's underwater porcupine. A little, little school in my home the area where I live, uh, East Union, there's a sea urchin, and they have this on all their t shirts. That really bothers me. It's a seahorse. I mean, we're a school, get it right, okay? Get it right. I mean, it'd be kind of like the golden wave, and they got blue wave, you know, t shirt, you know, or whatever. So anyway, very violent, mean, powerful seahorse, but size of finger, not a predator, not a very, you know, good name for a sports team, I would think, okay? Anyway, lionfish, uh, other one here, swordfish. I love those. I went to two fishing this summer. Boat caught on fire. We didn't catch any fish. It was very interesting. <laughs> bad, bad experience. It's all those little guys. Um, but look at all the, the systems they have. Very well advanced. Reproductive digestion. They got it all. Very cool. Uh, low fin fish possess their fleshy fins that are supported by bones. Okay, and these guys include these fish that can walk across the road. So in the places of Texas, they got time that says slow the traffic fish crossing the road. <laughs> so they can get up and cross over and go several, I don't know how far they can go, but they go several hundred yards to lake to lake. And we obviously think these guys probably were some of the fish that became the amphibians, right? They came out of the water. Our thought. Okay, so the amphibians contain limbs and they're tetrapods. Okay, now so if you're out this weekend, you go to a bar, some guy says, hey, you should go look at tetrapods, don't slap it, don't shoot me. That just means you got four finishes, okay? <laughs> okay, that's okay, fine. Uh, they have smooth, smooth not scaly skin. They have long, right? Usually uh, present in adults. Sometimes they, uh, they may live in the water for part of it. Uh, double loop circulatory pathway with three chambered hearts. They're going to have the uh, sense organs really well. Ectodermy, they are still, they stay the same temperature as the environment. This is why the, the snakes and stuff get slow at night. You know, if you're ever down in the desert or wherever, the animals start to move kind of slowly, it could be iguanas and stuff, because they get, they get kind of cold and they can't move real fast. Uh, they, these guys, too, the other cool thing about the amphibians is they have to have, still have to have uh, water for reproduction. So the sperm swims to the egg in the, in, the, in the water. So they have to go back to a lake to have sex, to have babies. Uh, and the metamorphosis, of course, today, my wife teaches kindergarten, and she usually does this in a normal year. This pandemic has been crazy, but she went to order some tadpoles. And then let the kids see them turn into uh, frogs, right? So they, they go into their little, they, 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 they clean up and become big metaphors into frogs, right? So once again, we saw metamorphosis in some of the insects, right? And here we see it in the, in the uh, that's a classic one. If you have, if you have little kids, I'm serious, if you homeschool, order some freaking, order you some of these and feed them and watch them turn into a little fish into, you know, basically what looks like a fish into a, into a frog. Uh, what was it? Look at the development of the heart here. So the heart and the fish uh, pretty much, an atrium which collects blood and ventricles pump the blood to the organs. So they have like a gill capillary, then the rest of the body. And then we get the amphibians and they start to see this three chambered heart. So we have uh, blood coming from the capillary beds of the body and this here, and then it goes and pumps to the lungs and back to this left chamber. And then it gets pumped back to the big one to pump it back to the rest of the body. So we have a circulation like that. Uh, the reptiles, birds, and mammals have this four chambered heart that we have. We have two atrium, two ventricles, and we have on the right side of our heart pumps blood to the lung and back. That's called the uh, pulmonary circuit. And then the left side of your body pumps blood all the way down to your big toe. Okay. So kind of a cool evolution of the heart, and we'll see that. Uh, that's why if you cut an artery, hope you don't ever, but if you were in a skiing accident last week, cut your artery, it squirts right, right red blood out, right? And you'll bleed to death, you have to get that stopped. You cut a vein, it just kind of eases dark blue blood, and you're probably okay. You just, Yellow time to get to the hospital. You're not going to die. I cut the vein. But you could bleed to death if you cut an artery. Uh, bad story. Got to make this interesting. About them. So we, I, I was raised on both sides. I was raised on a dairy farm, and we didn't have cattle. We didn't do horses. 
Now I got a motorcycle out of three. We chased cattle with motorcycles. So we were just racing them down our road. And, uh, and my granddad got mad, and I didn't know this, but they, we had a, on, my, on our farms in my granddad's house, and you go about a mile down this hill to the bottom, we had like a 200 acre field. Maybe not a mile, just a couple hundred yards down the hill. I didn't know there was a gate down there at the bottom of the hill. I'm like 13, and I got a cousin 15. And so my, my granddad told us to stop running, running driving by his house real fast, and so we kept doing it. He went down there and closed that gate and didn't tell us. Oh, no. So we're racing down to the bottom of the, to the creek. And thank God I'm in second. Something there is sometimes good to be second. So my my cousin, two years older than me, gets three bob wire strands with no post in it. One catches his teeth, not the two front teeth off. Other one catches him in the throat and almost killed him. Within, within like a couple of millimeters of his cardiac artery, and the other caught him in the throat. Okay. He's okay down there, but it didn't feel good for him. <laughs> Everything's still there, but it was bad. So I come right behind him, and I'm like locking up my, and I jump out, roll him over, and I think he's about there. We get an ambulance, and he was okay. But you know, but he had to have fake teeth put in, and had to have, he's got a nice permanent scar down here. All right, say, thanks, Granddad. Okay, but anyway, but luckily we didn't hit a big artery. Uh, evolution of the amphibian, uh, here's some hypothesis of that. I already alluded to him. Uh, the tetrapod evolution, the low fish that, that you know, came up on land and developed into real baby. Uh, they adapted supply of food on land, and there were no predators on land, so it's a good place to go. And we have some fossil intermediates of some of these, okay? So that's just one of our hypothesis there. Here we go. Here's some of these intermediates, so we can see the uh, the uh, fossilized remains of that fore limb and this evolution of this front limb and back limb from the So that's a fossil that we found this transitional form. Pretty cool. Uh, today, uh, the amphibians occur in three groups. Uh, I have a son in law that is a uh, finished his PhD in wildlife management, and he is a salamander worshiper. He loves salamanders. And I've been with him in the woods, and we'll go and we give him a good walk a mile. And I'm like, I didn't see a freaking salamander. He's like, I can't tell. I'm like, what the heck? Come on. Yeah. No. no, they were not seven salamanders. Then he'd walk back with me, and he would just show them to me because he just knows how to look for them, and how to turn over a rock and find them, okay? Now, why do we care about salamanders? Well, I, don't, I think we should care about everything on God's earth. But for us, another thing about these is we, we start seeing these guys die, other animals start to die after them. So they're good indicators for us to watch to make sure some of y'all are going to end up being, uh, we may have somebody here end up being a wildlife biologist, right? Or work. I would work for the federal government, which my daughter is, and right? that's what he's going to do. They pay better than the state ones, right? A little bit better job than the federal job. But we need to keep an eye on these guys. And now he actually did some research where he could go out to a creek bank and just take a sample of DNA from the one from the just rub the side of the bank and he could tell the salamanders have been there. They can look for this environmental DNA that we leave, and that's really a cool way of doing that without having actually killing the salamander and taking to the lab, you know, whatever, uh, or trying to catch and release. So anyway, some cool stuff there. I have a lot of respect for that. Uh, they in front of they practice internal fertilization, which comes closer to us, right? The frogs and toads, this other group. And this other one, I've never heard of these. I was reading this two weeks ago for y'all. Never heard of this one. These are uh, legless, slightly worm shaped, another animal group that I don't know about. So I just, we, we kind of stayed in the main groups here. I've never seen this before, okay? But I'm going to ask for an official group whatever. Okay, all right. But anyway, I just sometimes pronounce these the best I can. But anyway, that guy. Obviously, you've seen these two, right? And we usually do a dissection of this. I don't know if we do it anymore. We usually order some pretty big frogs and we cut them. I think we may do a pig for our final dissection, but that's pretty cool. And the question anyway, I should wait, man. I'll do my best. Salamanders kind of cool there. All right, now we're ready to move in and talk about uh, what is that? Can't even see what this is talking about right here. Okay, but anyway, uh, usefulness of some of this snake venom right? can be used for medicine. Goats can actually be used. Yeah, <laughs> Miss Miss uh, some of y'all have Miss uh, Lisa Strong. She she's gone into goat business now. And they had twins on the on the on that wing of the snow. So I just love how animals decide to have their babies on the first day of the year, right? And then they had then they had another set of twins with their goats. But now we can genetically modify the DNA in the uh, memory glands of some of these uh, animals like cows and goats and how milk products, human products we want out of that. So we use them to make our products for us. That's pretty cool. And of course, this is a good one here, but if you need a heart valve, let's say you know you gotta have a heart valve, they can take your DNA and conceive a pig. And put your cellular markers, remember those MHC markers we talked about that's, that the new system recognizes being used. They can put that in a pig, grow it up to full size, and kill it. I guess you have a barbecue too. Maybe have a 
you know, have a big barbecue and then take that heart valve out and put it in you and then your body will recognize that as your heart valve. So pretty common procedure for heart valve replacement is two choices, plastic one or a pig one, okay? We actually did hearts at AMP this week and we, we saved a bunch of saved a little money this year. We went with sheep hearts, which are a lot smaller than ours. The pig hearts are a little bit bigger than ours. And I did not enjoy it as well. I'm, I'm going to go back. We got to go back to pigs once we get COVID. But we do a group of like three or four people. But we got enough. We can buy enough of the little sheep hearts to uh, let everybody dissect their own. But pretty cool little picture. So we can use a lot of these animals for different things. Okay. Uh, we got a young girl last year. She did, did her degree. She's at the Dallas State. I wrote her letter of reference the day. She's going to be a. She wants to be a reptologist. That's what she's going to do. She loves stuff. Uh, uh, Snakes and stuff. And, I, and we did like 30 seconds something in here. She got mad. Like, what do you do for us? That's all the books got. Okay. Go take a class on it, right? But how, we have anybody big on reptiles? Big, big, like, I mean, she had like five pet snakes. She had them all. She had like little ones, big ones. She had the 20 foot one. You know, <laughs> she was snake crazy. 17,000 species of reptiles. Okay. Here's some common characteristics. They have the paired limbs. Uh, most of the ones that are, you know, that have limbs. Okay. Reptiles have a thick, scale skin that make really good boots. Right? Anybody in the boots, right? Anybody got snake skin boots? Those are pretty expensive, right? Those are nice boots. Okay. They have the lungs, so they have efficient breathing mechanism, uh, efficient circulation with the ventricles uh, are, are completely divided in two. We have to have two ventricles. Uh, uh, they have a kidney, excretory system. They are also ectoderms, so they say the same temperature as their environment. Uh, kind of cool here, they have a shelled egg that is soft. Has anyone ever seen this? You've been in the creek and you run up on like a, or it's obviously a nest and you see like 10 pin little eggs in it, but they know they're not hard shell like ours, maybe they take a chicken egg. That's you during the snake pit. Okay. Hope mama don't come, mama and daddy don't go back, right? But anyway, but they have a very weird soft shell kind of thing, kind of weird. Uh, so here's our alligators and, and crocodiles, right? Oh, kind of a neat story. I don't know if y'all know the story of these guys, but did y'all know that these were on the endangered species list in the 80s down in Florida? So when I got when I got to college, they were they were a big push to make they were on the endangered species list. And so by just doing a little bit of put, stopping people from killing them, they, they have overwhelmed Florida now. Florida has got way more alligators than they needed. And and, uh, and of course they moved up in Louisiana, right? And we even see them down around here. We found them in Arkansas underneath it, and they come up the Mississippi River and the, the San Town Waterway. And I never saw one of these, you know, there was, as a kid, no one had ever seen one of these in Mississippi probably. Uh, that we knew of, right? And now I have friends of mine that go down to our to a, a, what's the big lake in Jackson from Ross Barnett, and you, you have to draw to get a license. Okay, now look, and I'm, I'm all about hunting and stuff, okay? But I generally don't like to hunt things that can kill me. I'm just going to be real. My favorite hunt is the dove hunt, the totally non violent, peaceful bird that we slaughter. I mean, don't you wish they had some kind of like little rocket shot that they could fire back at us? It'd make it more fun if they could shoot us, you know, and they. Little, little stingers or something. I'm not saying kill us, but at least you know defend themselves a little bit. Okay, I'm just saying. I they asked me to go. I said I'll pass. Because what you have to do is you have to go out in the night and you have to see one. Then you have to you can't shoot them with a gun. You have to you have to spear them or whatever hook them with a hook. And you can only shoot them when they're on the edge of the boat with a pistol. You can't use use a shotgun. You have to shoot them in the head when you get them in the boat or the edge of the boat. And my friends got one that was probably as big as that. They got one that was like 17, 16 feet long. It moved them for like eight hours. It took them on a trip. And they, they finally wore it down when they began to come up. And there was that moment it got in the boat that wasn't sure if it was <laughs> alive or not. Like, Did you really hit it when you shot it? You know, because uh, it could kill you as it should, because you're killing it. Okay, I understand. It's defending itself. Okay. But anyway, unbelievable guy, powerful organism here. But look at that. All those, all those major organs, fully developed, digestive. Urinary system, et cetera, et cetera. Very cool. Very powerful. They do sell the tails and they can make you pretty much. We've all seen what is it, the, the, the whole TV show on, on the network. On, remember those crazy guys and how these were living? Oh, yeah. The swamp people, swamp people, man. That was a crazy hit a couple of years ago. Swamp, swamp guys, right? Uh, anyway, make a living on it. Okay, moving on. So the amniotes, then, the egg layers, right? Thought they have evolved from amphibians, right? Three lineages of these turtles. Okay, the big one here, turtles and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the egg layers. And, and here's where we get a big debate here, look at some of the evolution here. Uh, and Miss, Miss, and Miss Green, do y'all have Miss Green's alive? I love Miss Green, one of my best friends. She could, y'all would get her mad, y'all make her mad. You know, you want to just stir her up, you want to stir her up a little bit? Tell her how much you really know, you totally 
And Miss Brown fully explained how birds are kids and dinosaurs. That really bothered her. She went from a separate group. Because <laughs> that's how she was taught. Okay, it kind of like it bothers her, I think. But it really, it, she, she, she's like, I hate this. Birds are not for really the kids and dinosaurs. Yes, they are. Okay. At least that's what we're thinking they are, right? So, anyway, so they come back. Look, look at this. Kind of a cool. I'm not going to go crazy about this, but what we're looking at is these holes in the head. Look at this. So this evolution, these to have one hole leads to turtles, snakes, and lizards. Okay, and then these other holes here, these dorsal temporal openings, the two the two ones come seem to come down and see how it goes here. These guys out here have, have these three openings, and so the birds and the dinosaurs and crocodiles have that three opening, and that's our evidence that they're kin to each other, one of the big indicators. But when we took it. Well, I was way older than her, but when she took it in high school, college, you know, it was like birds were over by themselves. You know, nowhere akin to nowhere akin to dinosaurs, but we have found a bunch of fossils of these lizards with, with, with their feathers, which is one of the big, I mean, nobody's got, you know, birds, feathers. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty big. That's their thing, right? One of their big things. But we find these these floating, these um, these dinosaurs that would glide. They did not have full motion, but they would they would get on the hill and they'd jump and they had wings so they could fly. They can uh, glide, I guess, like a glider. Okay. But anyway, interesting time. Look at the time period here. Look at this. So, remember when all the trees were in the coniferous period, it became our uh, coal. So, 359 million years ago, these guys appeared. They split off. You got these, the two holes that go this way to become the mammals and turtles or whatever. And then we see this branch that led to the dinosaurs and the birds and the crocodiles. Okay. Pretty wild. Oh, that's kind of neat. That's just where we're at. And once again, this has been redrawn. Like, like I said, that's why Miss, Miss Green gets in there because they keep redrawing these lines, right? So we can't exactly nail it down where it all comes from. Notice uh, the last mass extinction was 65 million years ago. I believe that's the last time we think the, the meteorite or comet hit Earth and threw everything into a global uh, warming or whatever event, you know, or a you know, greenhouse effect or whatever you want to call it. You know, not, not the nuclear winter is what we call it now. Uh, but it's a pretty bad deal uh, there. But you can see that there's that. I love that we all love the movie Jurassic Park. That is the period from 200 to 145 million years ago when the dinosaurs pretty much ruled our, they were the largest time, or the largest animals. Okay, they were, it was their time. And it appears ours is now, right? So we were the top of Boone Jay right now for the next big uh, event occurs. Okay, pretty cool there. Okay, uh, moving on here, looking at some of these reptiles, turtles, and tortoises, right? Another, another great pet to have, right? Have a beak instead of teeth, and that throws us throws us into a weird doll here. And then of course the head, the big shell, lizards, four claw feet, carnivores, and then snakes lost a limb. Uh, allows them to do the dirt better. Carnivorous, uh, some are venomous. We already know that, right? Uh, then we got this next one here, weird one here, and then crocodiles down here. Uh, here's some of our, of course, the sea turtles are beautiful, right? Actually went down to Hawaii two years ago and saw some of those out snorkeling. Uh, I get an update every day from the place I rented my smart snorkeling gear, and it makes me wish I was in Hawaii. Like well, last week, we had to put us know it said perfect day. Do we give it a 10? They ranked the day every day, the snorkeling day was a 10. And I'm thinking, I wish I was in Hawaii. But those are cool. Uh, then we got the, like the other ones here, rattlesnakes. That's some pretty scary stuff to stay away from those guys, right? Uh, here's the one. This, these are the ones that they have at the zoo that the, the, they call them the dragon trap. You know, they look like these are, these are the closest thing left to the. Dinosaurs still out there. And then there's our crocodiles. Notice we're going to see our shit. We have these, they have these same layers in our development of our womb, right? And the mother's womb. So the egg, only difference is that we're connected to placenta. The egg layers have everything in there they need for the baby to be born, right? So they carry food. Uh, they even have their own little porta pot. <laughs> they have a little, the allantosis is their waste, waste bin where they put all their waste products. Okay, pretty cool. All right, birds. Okay, here's the big things they got feathers. Okay, and they have feathers that are fly feathers and down feathers. So this one is the, the, the ducks could sit on ice cold water last week, sit on that ice and not die. So they use that for warmth and they are fly feathers and they've been modified their skeleton to hollow out their bones for flight. Okay, of course, they have a very bizarre respiratory system where they let that air flow through them because that would be a drag. You know, they have a mechanism to let the air come flow through them and they are endotherms like us, they maintain that internal temperature. Okay. Of course, acute vision and others there, amazing. And I, I tell you this, uh, this is actually brought up a cartoon here. We are, I'm a, a, a former, I was raised in Lee County. So my family, my, my, my dad and them, they still own it. They actually split it up last couple years when we got part of it. But uh, 
We found an eagle's nest on some land of ours. And I have some pictures I have to put posted to y'all see. But me and my best one of my best friends are pretty good. He's a doctor, but he's also got about ten thousand dollars worth of package equipment. So we go down that field, y'all, and we see the eagle nest, and we're miles away. We start walking out to that turn, eagle's nest, and that eagle started looking at us. And we were looking at the doctor, and she saw us before we saw her. Their eyes were unbelievable. And so we got we got a, like a we got like a, a hunt hunt. You know, like a little hunt tent thing, or we got like a blind, yeah. And so we tried to move up to her, and we got her so worked up that she got up and started flying around us, like she's going to attack us. And we got some great pictures of her landing in that nest. It's pretty beautiful. Uh, I just told y'all. But amazing visions. Like I told y'all when we started this, I hope I did, in one of the lectures I did, we got the best eyes, we got the best nose, we got the best ears, but we, we got to get a little bit somebody. Like, okay, but we do not, we're nowhere clear near the eagle's vision. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, most birds can fly. We have some that can't fly. <laughs> okay, the penguins and the, uh, the ostrich don't fly, uh, and they're classified according to the beak and the foot type and habitat and behavior. So, really cool ones here. Love me some bald eagles. And uh, anybody feed the birds during the ice storm? Anybody do love bird feeding? Okay, nobody did. We did. We went to Walmart and bought like 10 more pounds of them. My wife's crazy. We've been feeding birds I like every bird in Dade County has been telling me this these last two weeks. Okay, and then it gets to mammals. And here's the big characteristics of mammals. I think that's one of our questions. There's five characteristics of mammals. The big two are the first two. We're the only ones that have hair and mammary glands. Or as the student once told me, hair is something I won't say that he that was the way he memorized it. Okay. Hair is memory glands. Okay, hair everywhere, not necessarily memory glands, but it was a joke. Sorry. All right, so we make milk, we feed our babies that, and they have the full skeleton, right? And we'll look at the brain and evolution of the chapter of the human evolution in a minute or next time. Uh, awesome respiratory system, efficient circulatory system, double loop circulatory. We already said that. Systemic pulmonary circuit of the heart, uh, kidneys, well developed nervous system. Okay, take a quick look. Evolution of the mammals then. And we'll, we'll, we'll finish this up. We got about five minutes. We'll finally finish this chapter. That'd be awesome. So, mammals share this amniotic ancestry with reptiles. Okay, first tree mammals appeared during that Triassic period, coexisted with the dinosaurs. I don't think we we did not come along to about anything close to us to like four or five million years ago. Okay, so we did not walk with dinosaurs. Okay, uh, that's one of my pet peeves. I can't think of. I can't went to church one Sunday. One summer we had a we had a BBI. How many of y'all went to BBI? Right, they gave all the stuff they were talking about. But they, they never heard of this. A lot of churches right here do like little kids programs in the summer. And what's the one rule about BBI? It's usually a story out of the Bible. Like we like to do Noah and kill everybody. Right? Noah's a rock going right, which is kind of a disaster. Anyway, I walked to church, going to church one Sunday, and I'm not involved, but just okay, I wasn't involved with this planning. And we're doing man walk with dinosaurs. And I come on to it. We got dinosaurs, <laughs> puppets everywhere in our church, and little cavemen, you know, like from Land of Laws walking with them. And after the guy gave his hour speech, I had some nice words with him. And I went to our leadership and I said, hey, we ain't doing this no more. And they did. They listened to me. I said, at least, at least, at least let's stay in the Bible, right? So the BBS, call me crazy, and dinosaurs are not a Bible. I don't think. Okay. So it does talk about some big creature, creature but my people think it's the hippopotamus talking about there. Okay. But anyway, but it's kind of cool. But it looks like we come along, they disappeared 65 million years ago. We've been around 2 million years. Okay. So look at this. One tree, the earliest mammal. So look at this. This is crazy. Here are the three groups. We, we have the center bird. This is really cool. Y'all will like this. The monitrines are cray cray. They lay eggs and they and the, and the male and female both have memory glands. The males feed the baby. And the baby hatches out of egg. That's crazy, right? That's the, that, but that's the monitrine. And then the marsupials are the kangaroo and the only marsupial in North America is the possum. So the babies are born premature early. They call out a mother. They don't have a vagina, they have a calicia, which is a, is a joint digestive reproductive structure. So they poop and bring the male sperm in the same open. Just have one eye. The babies crawl out of that, go up into the pouch and grab a nipple. So if there's 12 babies and eight nipples, four babies die. Okay. And then they feed the babies from that pouch. And has anybody ever been in the woods at night? I have baby food hunting, and you're looking for it's a crazy sport. Okay. It's kind of like tipping, cow tipping. Okay. But legit, okay, you, if you go shoot, go pop hunting. And you'll look up there and shine a light, and you'll see one, two big eyes, and like 12 little eyes looking at you, and this mother with six babies on her back. And we wouldn't shoot her. So they, they, they do extended care of the baby. 
Okay, so one of my questions is the three groups. So Montreal, Marsupial, Placenta bird, that's us. And, the, and of course, the, 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 the bears, et cetera. But these kangaroos, and these are almost exclusive to Australia, right? But the only one in North America is, is the fox. Okay, which is kind of weird when you think about it, okay? Uh, anyway, kind of cool, but you see where all these appear much later. Okay, and here's the montrees. They have hard shelled eggs, uh, that color single urogenital opening. Okay, so urinary tract and reproductive tract track together. Marsupials have the pouch. Okay, and then we have the placenta bird. And I, I remember a little thing. I, I saw one y'all working around where you got the heads of all the animals and the body and the tail. When you're little kids, it's like a book and you can mix them up. They can have like a giraffe head and a zebra body and then a dog tail. Y'all remember that game? So it's cool little, 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 little kids there. And now I saw it virtual. I think my kids got it I don't know, in the DVD or whatever. Okay, but it's a little game. I think God's playing with us. Look, dog head, a, a dolphin body, and a beaver tail. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, there is the koala bear and the possum. Okay, how many of y'all think the koala bear is beautiful, sweet little, just a beautiful thing you like to hold? Nah, they are like bad. They'll bite your fingers off. They got, they got wire wires here, wire covers. They will wear you out. So it's, it's just funny how people say, oh, it's so cute. No, that's evil looking too. Look at that. He would hurt you. You would not want to grab him up, okay? And of course, I got to pick on the possum. I'm going to give you a minute here, but I got to pick on the possum. Okay, what is what, what do we what do we get our our, our swing word possum from? What's one of their defense mechanisms? To play possum, all right? You jump up there, scare them, they'll roll over and play dead. Okay, this worked awesome until the evolution of the car and the, and the highway. That's why they're dead on the road. They see lights, they duck and roll, run to the highway, get killed. So they have to do they have to follow like a double roll. You know, like roll, 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 roll this like that. They will evolve. They will evolve. Okay, I'm telling you, they'll figure it out over time. Okay, here's all the here's all the orders and examples of all the uh, placenta mammals. Very elaborate stuff here. And that's not a good time to stop. Uh, Y'all have a good day. Thanks for putting up with me today. Just know my questions. Like I said, we won't go crazy here. Y'all have a good day. May the force be with you.